let's talk about timing. Okay, we've alluded to it. Okay, let's get down to the nuts and bolts, page 27. When it comes to delivering the three-page loan estimate, once we have the six items for TRID, the clock has started, and that's going to be letter A1, small letter A, top of page number 27. Once we have the six item for TRID, so that milestone's a big one. Document the date you got the last of the six items uh, from the applicant. Three days later, the loan estimate and other TRID-related three-day disclosures have to go out the door. And so that's letter A1, small letter A. Well, that's not the only timing that we have to be uh, familiar with when it comes to TRID and the loan estimate. Now, letter B doesn't come into play all that often, especially if there's a dwelling involved relative to the TRID ingredients, consumer purpose, closed in, and dirt. If the dirt comes with a dwelling, we generally don't have to worry about letter B because anything dwelling secured will take much longer than a seven-day time frame from application to close. But because TRID is consumer purpose, closed in, and dirt, it doesn't always come with a dwelling, right? And sometimes those things can appear that they may be able to close faster. There's still a limitation. TRID covered transactions cannot be closed, consummation if you will, until seven business days after the loan estimate has been provided. So there's two time frames you have to account for potentially when we're talking about a TRID transaction. The loan estimate has to go out within three and then we can't close until seven days after the loan estimate has went out. Again, if there's a dwelling involved, not a question. It's going to take longer than that anyway. But if you've got that consumer purpose closed in land secured by the bare 10 acres of ground, that might give indication to some that it could close faster. And that's not true. There's a minimum seven-day time frame that has to come and go. Now, in that seven-day time frame, the closed disclosure would also have to have been provided within its time frames. And that's tough to do. So these won't happen often. But just understand that there's a secondary time frame there. Now, many of you are looking at the bottom half of the page and going, oh, there's a waiver here. There, there, there must be a way around this. Well, there is, but you got to be careful. It works just like right of rescission. If you've ever been through a right of rescission training, okay, any type of truth in lending delay waiver works the same way. And this is no different. It has to be a bona fide personal financial emergency. The customer has to put it in writing, and you cannot use preprinted forms. So what's a bona fide personal financial emergency? Well, it was, it, let me do what it's not. It's not, you know, I need the money now. It's not, I have to buy it now. I need the cash out now. I feel lucky and need to go to Vegas. Those are not bona fide personal financial emergencies. It's that my, it's the middle of the winter and the furnace is out. It's, I need funeral expenses. It's uh, the floodwaters are coming and I got a sandbag or the tornado just whipped through town and we've got to put things back together really quickly. And those are bona fide personal financial emergencies. Again, the borrower has to put it in writing. You have to justify it and document it after that. I My recommendation is you get a compliance professional involved before we sign off on any of these.